Hi everyone, my name is Dave Martin and this is another video in my series on how to create a YouTube channel for computer-aided design. In this video, I'm going to tell you my personal story in case that helps anyone out there who's thinking about creating their own channel. Along the way, I'm going to mention three different lessons that I learned and I'll start out with one of them. There's an old saying about the best time to plant a tree and the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. And the same thing goes for any kind of endeavor that you want to do, including creating a new YouTube channel. So my story with my channel goes back to 2018. I was working for an aerospace company as a computer-aided design administrator supporting Creoparametric and Windchill. And so there were three main problems that I noticed or three main issues that we had with our implementation and support regarding Creoparametric and Windchill. One of them dealt with new hire training. So let's say that somebody joins the company. Well, during their first week, they would spend pretty much half a day going through initial training on Creoparametric and Windchill. And it wasn't just how to use Creoparametric and Windchill, especially for brand new users, but for experienced users, it also covered that company's processes for CAD and PLM. And so it was a lot of material that was delivered during someone's first week. And if they didn't catch everything, basically their only option was to go through the training all over again. And no one really wanted to do that. The second main problem that I saw was that as a CADmin or CAD admin, one of our responsibilities was providing support to the different users. And I would get a lot of desk drop-ins. We had a ticket system, but again, a lot of people just like to stop by your desk and ask questions. And a lot of them were of a somewhat basic variety. For example, someone would come by and ask, hey, how do I create a copy geometry feature? Or they might have a question about how do I get my dimensions on a drawing or how do I create a new gd and t symbol on a drawing? You know, just stuff that was like fairly routine, but people were asking you for your help and it could take you away from your work for anywhere from like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, even 45 minutes helping one person at a time. A third problem that I noticed is that when we were getting support tickets, we were tending to get the same tickets over and over and over again. For example, someone might be creating a change notice in Windchill in order to release some objects, and they did an accidental revision of the objects, and so they needed that latest revision to be deleted from the system. Or maybe someone just needed access to a new project that they're working on. Or just fixing something on a drawing or an assembly or in a part model that they were getting wrong. And so as a result of getting these same issues and problems over and over again, well, for one thing, I started to get a little bored with my job. But second, I proposed doing an analysis of all the different tickets that were being submitted to our team in order to figure out if there were some common patterns or some root causes that I could find. And so I went back into the system and looked at six months worth of tickets. And yes, I found some common patterns and came up with a couple of solutions. I came up with a couple of recommendations. And I figured out that there were a couple ways that we could see a drastic reduction in tickets and an improvement in the efficiency of the people who were using Creo and Windchill. And both recommendations were around creating videos. 
my first recommendation was that we take that initial training that people went through during their first week with the company and we record it and we make it available to people to watch anytime that they needed to 24 seven in order to refresh themselves on the knowledge that they needed to do their job. And the second part was creating a bunch of how to videos that would help people with common tasks. Maybe it's the first time that they're trying to do something, or maybe there's something that they haven't done in a few months and they need a refresher. Again, it might be around part modeling, you know, creating sweeps, creating rounds in a part. It might be around assemblies, whether it's with top down design, replacing components, that sort of stuff or creating drawings. Maybe someone is creating a drawing for the first time. Maybe they need help getting different views, how to apply sections to a view, how to get the details on the drawing, how to create notes, how to create gd &T, how to create uh, different datum targets in there, whatever it is, they might need help doing those different things. And it would be nice if they had some videos that they could look up in order to teach them so they weren't stalled, they weren't needing to grab one of their coworkers to help them, they weren't needing to submit a ticket, they weren't needing to grab one of us CAD admins from our desk in order to show them how to do it. And so I thought this was going to be a great benefit. I took my proposal, I presented it to my managers, and then I waited, and I waited and I waited. And that brings me to my second recommendation. Stop waiting for permission. And that really dawned on me. Rather than waiting for getting people's blessing to do something that I knew was a great idea, I should have just gone and done it and then showed the results of the benefits. But anyhow, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise that my managers never gave me approval. And by never giving me approval, well, in essence, it ended up being a disapproval and then it ended up being rejecting that request. So anyhow, a couple months pass and one day I am taking a walk and I'm just thinking through a bunch of different problems in my life and thinking about different ways that I can solve them and different things that I need to do. And finally it dawns on me, why don't I take that idea about making all these different videos to help people with computer-aided design and product lifecycle management and make a YouTube channel? And I thought, let me, let me think about that. You know, again, I'm still on my walk, walking around. And so I figured the first thing that I should do is go home and take a look on YouTube because surely someone by now has created a YouTube channel for Creo Parametric and Windshield. There's no way in 2018 that I would be the first one to come up with this idea. And so I get home, have a quick drink of water, rush to my computer and I start searching on YouTube for Creo Parametric. And I start taking a look at the videos that are available. And I look at one video and another video and another video. I'm looking at all these videos and I literally start shaking because I can't believe how bad the existing videos were on YouTube for Creo Parametric. And some of them were just, well, actually a lot of them were just low quality or you know, they, they weren't great videos to begin with. And a big problem with many of them was the audio. The audio was just really bad quality or the person would not even have any voiceover. It would just be some really awful music in the background. Other people had no audio and they would have notepad open and they would be typing out what they were doing on notepad in order to explain their different clicks or trying to explain how to do something in Creo Parametric. And that actually brings me to three different recommendations about audio. And I've mentioned this in another video, 
people will switch away from your channel for bad audio quicker than they will for bad visuals. And so first off, make sure that you have a decent microphone. You're not just using the computer microphone because that one ends up to be, tends to be pretty bad. You wanna have an external microphone that is better quality than what comes with your computer. Second, you want to address acoustics. And so if you are in a room and you're getting a lot of echoes, you wanna do something to reduce those echoes. In the next video, or maybe the one after that, I'll show my setup in my little den that I use for recording, and I'll show you how I deal with a lot of the different echoes. You can also use rugs, you can also spread blankets around the room. But again, if you are noticing really bad acoustics, do something about it. Go onto YouTube and search on how to make better sounding videos and they will tell you about addressing the acoustics and the echoes in the room that you are recording. And third, this one might be a little unpopular, but if you speak in a really thick accent, if English is not your first language, Get a voiceover artist, hire someone who speaks better in order to give the narration because honestly, there are a bunch of computer aided design videos that are recorded in English, but it's just really hard to understand or follow the person that is speaking. Oh, and by the way, some people use text to speech. Don't use TTS text to speech. It just sounds awful. I personally am at the point where I can't listen to any TTS videos anymore. But anyhow, those are three recommendations about audio that you can follow. And so again, I decided based on taking a look at what was available on YouTube to make my own channel. And I am so glad that I did it. And that leads to my third lesson and what I'm going to conclude with. Doing stuff leads to stuff. And by creating this YouTube channel, it's actually opened up so many other doors for me. And so again, if you're thinking of doing it, if you're thinking of creating a YouTube channel for computer aided design or for any other subject where you have expertise, I recommend that you just do it because you will not believe all the things that it'll do. Because what happens is, people end up wanting to work with people who get stuff done, people who do stuff. And by making videos, you're showing people that you are one of those different kinds of people. And so again, doing stuff leads to stuff. Anyhow, that's my personal story. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please leave a comment. Thank you very much.